Hey folks, Jonathan Bennett here with something that is not Mesh-tastic, but is a topic you're sure to find interesting. Today we're going to look at installing OpenWRT, OpenWrite, OpenWord as a virtual router and then explore a unique way to use two internet connections at the same time with a really simple trick. To let the cat out of the bag right at the start, we're going to use the IPv4 gateway from one ISP and IPv6 connectivity from the other. Now I hear you, you want to know why. Why would someone want to do this? The main reason, it is a super simple way to use the bandwidth from two ISPs with some built-in failover. All because many services are available on both IPv4 and IPv6, and browsers are already good at failing over from one to the other. There are some other niche cases where this might be useful. For example, I've got a static IPv4 from one ISP and a faster connection with IPv6 from the other. Is it quite as powerful as a full failover solution now? But it's still useful, and to start, we do the OpenWrite install. You can skip ahead if you already have an OpenWRT router running. For hardware, we want a machine with three Ethernet ports, or technically you can make this work with VLANs, but it's a bit outside the scope of this demo. Also, we're using an Alma Linux base. One of the tricks here is to use bridge devices. You can think of those as virtual network switches that we can plug multiple virtual devices into. There are ways to configure this without bridge devices, but I've always had better success using bridges. Here, we're using bridge zero for our LAN, bridge one for our WAN one, that's IPv4 only, and bridge two for our WAN two that also has IPv6. I'm gonna be using Alma Linux nine that's based on Red Hat nine and then Network Manager. The commands we use is based on NMCLI and the process here is simple. For each bridge, it's NMCLI connection add type bridge con name bridge zero if name bridge zero. And then to add a physical connection, say NP7S0 to bridge zero, it's NMCLI connection add type ethernet slave type bridge con name bridge zero port one if name ENP7S0 master bridge zero. And then something interesting you can do is to assign an IP address to a bridge. You probably wanna set your, servo, your server's local IP address to the bridge you connect to the LAN using something like NMCLI connection modify bridge zero IPv4.addresses 192.168.1.2 slash 24 IPv4.gateway 192.168.1.1 IPv4.dns 8.8.8.8 IPv4.method manual. And for a bridge that doesn't get an IP address, like our ISP connections, you run NMCLI connection modify bridge one IPv4.method disabled, and probably the same command, but with IPv6.method as well. Now on to the installation of OpenWRT. Here on the OpenWrite site, we're looking for the current stable series downloads. Search for x86, select x86 64. The easiest image to use is this combined ext4. Let's copy that file location and then log into our server. As root or using sudo, we'll change directory. So that's cd space slash ver lib libvert images. That's where libvert expects file, uh, file images to be found. And we use wget to get the URL that we just copied. So wget and then paste. Next, we need to extract the image using gzip. So gzip space dash d in the name of the file to give us our final .img. Now, I'm not covering here the process of giving libvert d enabled and running. Just a hint, you may need to enable virtualization in your BIOS to make that happen. So we're going to pull up vert manager, connect to the right server and create a new virtual machine. We want to use import existing disk image, hit browse, may have to hit refresh, but we want the OpenWRT combined image that we just downloaded. And the easiest way to go here is just going to be a Linux generic, the probably the latest that they have. Also of note, you only need a single CPU and 2048 or two gigs of RAM is definitely enough for OpenWRT. Name it something memorable. We want to customize configuration before install. If it did generate a default network card, we're going to go ahead and remove that. 
and then we add hardware. It's a little easier to add your LAN bridge first and then your two WAN bridges. Stick with vert IO for the best speed. And the network source is going to be bridge device. And we're going to use the device names that we just created for each of these. And with that, we can boot it up. By default, the open write image is available at 192.168.1.1. You can use the command line right on the router VM to change the IP if needed. Regardless, pull up the address in your browser. By default, a fresh OpenWRT install also uses a blank password. Don't forget to set a password once you log in and don't forget what it is. Then under network and interfaces, we'll add a new interface and name it for your second ISP. Connect it to F2. Don't forget to put this new interface in the WAN firewall zone. And then the real magic is here, where we unselect the option to use the default gateway. Then we go to the existing WAN 6 connection and into the physical settings and select the F2 interface. This gives us our IPv4 WAN connection on one ISP and our IPv6 WAN connection on the other. And to confirm, you can go to something like whatismyip.com and look for both the IPv4 and IPv6 to be filled. And of course, speedtest.net is great because it will happily use both IPv4 and IPv6 to show off that sick double connection speed. And that's it. That's the secret hack to use OpenWrite to make use of two internet connections and a free included speed run of posting a virtual router. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe to keep up with whatever comes next, whether it be Meshtastic, Linux, or the intersection of the two. And if you really want to say thank you, the tip jar is over at buymeacoffee.com slash jbennett. Until next time, keep those bits flowing.